Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to be talking about the law of gravity. And you can see here, I have a little sketch of my little planets here. And uh, what's going on? Well, what's going on is we have the formula, okay, for the force, okay, the gravitational force between two masses in space. Now, uh, what we're really talking about here is physics, but the language of physics, the language of uh, science is mathematics, and the specific objective here is to solve for R. So here we have our lovely uh, formula for the law of gravity, and uh, if my physics is uh, up to speed, uh, I believe the formula is uh, gravitational uh, force is equal to the gravitational constant G times uh, the, uh, mass 1 times mass 2, and the, we're talking about the respective masses between uh, two objects in space, divided by the radius square. Okay, that is the gravitational force. And uh, actually, I love physics. If I wasn't, um, you know, if I didn't uh, study and get my degree in mathematics, I would have been uh, into physics. So physics is awesome. And if you've never taken physics, hopefully one day you will take physics. Anyways, the objective here is to reshuffle this formula and write it in terms of R. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you how to rewrite this formula in terms of R. Uh, also, if you need help with the math course that you might be taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the answer. So here is the formula. We, again, we want to write it in terms of R. And when we do that, we get this. So R is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of G times M1 times M2 over uh, F. Okay, and of course, uh, all these uh, particular variables I just described to you what they mean. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%. And a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly how to solve for a specific variable in an equation where there's multiple variables, something like a formula. So that is very, very good. And uh, really the skill that we're talking about here is absolutely essential to master to be successful in algebra, mathematics, and of course, science. Because in science, you are working with a ton of formulas, okay? And you know, you're gonna have to be able to solve for whatever particular variable you need to uh, solve for in that uh, respective uh, formula. Okay, so if you're given this formula and you're interested in finding out what the radius is, you're gonna have to solve for R. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution here. So again, here is the equation. And effectively what's going on is that we have a gravitational force, right? So let's say this is the moon and here's the earth. So the moon is, um, you know, going orbiting around the earth, right? Because the earth ha is a larger mass, okay? So uh, again, I'm not a physicist, although I've taken a lot of um, physics and engineering through the years. Basically, we have this gravitational force, like gravity, right? If we kind of like jump up, let's say here, here's my little stick figure, man, and whatnot. I try to jump up, but guess what's going to happen? That gravitational force is going to bring me back down to the ground, right? So the gra there's a gravitational force here. That's what we're trying to calculate. So G, again, is a gravitational constant, all right? So we don't need to uh, kind of worry about that. Uh, M1 is the mass of um, uh, one object. M2 is the mass of another object. And then R, again, is the radius or the distance between the two uh, objects in space, you know, something like planets, stars, etc. All right. So that's basically the setup, just in case you were curious about this. But um, again, you know, physics is cool, right? Because physics really is like applied math. And um, I'll tell you, if you like math, you'll love physics. So I strongly encourage you to take a physics course. Um, anyways, so let's move on with the solution. And the solution is the following, okay? Well, I'm not actually going to get tell you the actual solution right now because I want to give you a, a little bit simpler problem just to make sure you understand uh, what's going on here for those of you that might be kind of confused. So let's suppose I have another lovely uh, physics um, formula, F equals M times A. This is force is equal to mass times acceleration. 
Let's say I wanted to rewrite this formula in terms of m, okay, or solve for m. So how do you do this, right? Well, basically, what you want to do in algebra is identify the variable you're trying to solve for. Uh, in this case, obviously, we're trying to solve for m. So we kind of want to focus in on that m, all right? So in this case, we have force is equal to m times a, all right? So now you're kind of really looking at that m. You're kind of really focusing on this. But what you're going to do is the variable you're trying to solve for, that's the only thing, you, only thing you're going to think of as a variable. In other words, you're going to think of this as a variable, okay, in your mind's eye. And then you're going to think of the a as just a number and f as just a number. This is a good way to kind of um, uh, approach rewriting um, formulas and equations um, in different variables. Okay, so here, for example, uh, I got f is equal to m times a. Let's just make up a number for f, an easy number. How about 10? And then m, that's our variable, so we'll keep that as m. We'll make up an easy number for a. How about like 2? Okay, so how would I solve for m given 10 is equal to m times 2? Now, m times 2 is the same thing as 2 times n, right? So we're talking super basic algebra. So to solve for m, all I would have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So m is equal to 10 divided by 2. And in this case, what was 10? Okay, well, 10 was the force, all right? And what was the 2? The 2 was representing like the acceleration. So m is equal to f over a, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. And if that does make sense, then you should be able to do this problem now. Okay, so here is our lovely uh, formula for uh, gravitational force. So let's get into this. So the first thing I want you to observe is that we have a fraction here. Anytime you see one fraction and something else all by itself on the other side of the equation, always think in terms of proportions. In other words, construct two equal fractions. So how can I think of F as a fraction? Easy, just put it over one. So I have F over one is equal to uh, all this stuff on the right-hand side of the uh, equation or formula. And now I can just simply use the cross product. Okay, Basic, we're talking about basic algebra here, right? So if one half is equal to, let's make up a fraction, four over eight. Okay, two equal fractions is as we have right here, the cross product is always true, i.e. one times eight is equal to two times four, eight is equal to eight, there you go. Okay, so again, we're talking basic algebra stuff here. So uh, knowing that the cross product is true, we have one fraction is equal to another fraction, let's go ahead and multiply. So f times r squared is this, f times r squared, and one times g uh, times m1 times m2 is this right here. Okay, so we're keeping an eye on our prize, and what are we now focusing in on in terms of a variable? We're focusing in on R. We're concentrating, and we're like, okay, I got a whole bunch of variables going on here, but I'm only thinking of R as the variable. So all this other stuff is just like numbers, right? So you got a number here and a big number here. Effectively, you have a situation, something like this, like 2R squared is equal to like 8, so, I mean, it's really easy, right? So to solve for r squared, we just simply divide both sides of the equation by 2. In this case, just divide both sides of the equation by f. And so we have this. All right, so now we have r squared is equal to just one big number, okay, right here. So how do we solve for r uh, when we are given r squared? Easy. We're going to take the square root of both sides, okay? So in other words, if I gave you r squared is equal to 25 to solve for r, you would just divide... Uh, just take the square root of both sides. So r is equal to plus or minus 5. In this case, r is going to be equal to plus or minus all this kind of good stuff right here. Okay, so hopefully this wasn't that difficult. And uh, this is something that you're absolutely uh, going to face, uh, not only in math, but in science. Okay, anytime you're working with formulas and things along these lines, you're going to have to rewrite those formulas uh, very often or solve for a particular variable within that formula. Okay, so a lot of students get confused with this. That's why I kind of took the time because uh, what, from my experience, uh, decades and decades of teaching mathematics, when you give a student a simple kind of model to kind of think of 
um, you know, how to approach these problems, something like I did right here, it generally will make things a lot easier. So when you're kind of stuck with this, just slow down. And one thing you could do as well is like, let's say you're, you're dealing with a complicated problem, just stop yourself and try to look at a simpler version of that problem and ask yourself, okay, what would I do here with that simpler version? And, you know, calm your mind down and be like, okay, now I know what to do. And then just kind of start tackling, you know, uh, the same steps, um, you know, take your time with something more complicated like this. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.